For those of you who are teacher trainers, or have teacher training, how, or even if you've just started actually teaching, um, how much time do you think is dedicated to pronunciation in the novice, like the initial teacher training course? <coughs> Four and a half hours. Yeah. It's not a lot of time, really, because considering we pronounce when we speak, and it comes into everything. Um, so, um, I'm also aware that a lot of teachers from other schools, or your schools, will be watching this on video. And it's always the new teachers who don't get to go. <laughs> um, so this will be <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the ED endings. All right, now if you got the green cards and the red cards. Don't worry about the words on them. Um, they have multi purposes. So <coughs> can you can you see these words here on the board or on the screen? Um, <coughs> just look at the ones on the left there, and I have A two to B one. Do you agree? If you agree. Hold up the green cards. Do you agree that you will see or hear these words in course books and in the classroom Absolutely. at those levels? Mm -hmm. Any green cards there if you agree? Okay, any red cards? What? Okay. <laughs> right. Um, look at the other end, the, the, the B2C one. I know they're varying differences, but at least B2C one. Do you agree that you might see these in course books or in the classroom? Green if you agree? Red. Okay, so some of them actually don't exist at all in course books, and some of them are very, very uh, infrequent, you know, if you look at the corpus. But they appear in classes because they come up as part of, at th those higher levels. Um, now, let's have a quick look at these across the levels. Across the levels. Um, what kind of categories are they? What sort of words? But basic categories. Okay. Nouns, verbs, adjectives. Okay, any any adjectives? Adjectives. Okay. Um, verbs. Yeah. Verb yeah. forms. Okay. What kind of verb forms have we got here? Yeah, you can see that that past participle. It's in past simple in regular verbs. And as you can also see, it's in passive form, so it appears again later on. Um, We have a bit of a problem because, okay, again, red cards, green cards, do you think in your experience that it's only the A2 levels that pronounce the ED endings wrong? Okay, lovely, lots of red cards. What about B2, C1? Do, we, do, we, do you find people... Question is, do you find people making mistakes at higher levels? Yes. yes. Lots of green cards. Okay. So uh, what I'd like you to do is to think outside the box, this specific box. Okay, this one, all right? I think that this box serves a purpose of, of limited scope, actually, So, especially for our teaching context. So we want to think outside the box. How many, how many um, voiced, so how many sounds are in this box? Does anybody know? 44. Uh, how many voiced sounds are there? How many voiceless sounds are there? Okay, how many voiceless sounds are there? Unvoiced. There's only nine. Yeah. There are only nine unvoiced sounds. I'm going to come back to that. Actually, it's significant for helping us teach our learners and our novice teachers, which is what I'm trying to get to. It's a really simple, really simple strategy, and it works. So, nine voiceless sounds, that's all. 35 voiced, all the vowels are voiced, right? Okay. Um, for your initial training, how do you teach voicing for you know, to new teachers and also for students in classes? Because it's not a, a, a thing that I'm Using minimal pairs? Minimal pairs, but just get the voicing differences. So, for example, just their yeah. hand together. You want to do this? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first thing you have this is, uh, okay, it's voiced. Um, what about voiceless sounds? 
physically, how do you get them to? Yeah, so you breath. Also, for those, uh, you know, very, very um, self-conscious students, it could be cultural, go to the bathroom, there's the mirror, it's just you and the mirror. Yeah. So you have the throat, you have the breath, you have the mirror, <coughs> and of course you have your chart to, to refer to, that's great. Um, there is a problem in practice that when, when students go out to the classroom and into the street, they can't go, uh, 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 you know, they can't go, they, they don't have a chart that they walk around with. They might have it on an app, but they don't have it to refer to all the time. So we need to give strategies to new teachers and to students. How can you how can you work on this? Because it's a little problem, but it, if, it, if it goes right through to C1, we're doing something wrong. We're doing something really basic at a very basic level. Um, so, here we are. So there's our LED. And here you can see, on the left and on the right, you can see we pronounce it sometimes, it, and sometimes. It. Does it matter which? Does it really matter? Who thinks it does matter? Yeah? It does. Okay. Is it, does it matter for meaning or does it matter for accent and, and regional variety? Meaning. Meaning. Good and id. So if I say decided and decided, did, is that a great difference in meaning? Not really. So you say walk it? Walk it? No, 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 no. It's a different thing. Right. Come back to that in a sec. So, yeah. right, so. Okay, the, the, there is. A, all right, so I'm going to come back to that list of words. Okay. So, we have. When the ED is preceded by t or d, the rule is. It, or it, and it or it doesn't actually matter. It's just regional variety. It actually doesn't make any difference for meaning purposes. So. Um, we have waited, wanted, started, okay, on the eight two end of things, and then the higher levels, wasted, frustrated, affected, okay, and then if you have a D at the end, because it's very difficult to say waited, yeah, decided, ended, you need that extra little, little vowel sound, and you can have a half of, you know, the, the, the schwa, the unstressed, and we could have it. My point is that you can introduce this at any level and all the time in every lesson. It doesn't matter if it's only you know that much <coughs> of a unit in a in a course book because you need to use it all the time. So in A2, for example, let's look at food. A food lesson in A2. Okay, we have adjectives: toasted, roasted, melted. Not difficult. And in the B2 lesson where we're looking at crime and passive, <coughs> very often they go together in a certain course, but they always go together, right? <laughs> so wanted, rested, abducted, absconded, vindicated, and it goes right the way up. <coughs> yeah, vindicated. We're looking at a CA class. Okay, so when, so that's the basic rule. Okay, the rule is ED pre, pre, uh, preceded by T or D, it's ED or D. The next rule, when ED is preceded by the voice sound, if you're not sure, do, uh, yeah. So, used, phoned, listened, believed, again higher levels, trampled, marginalised, it's up there with every new vocabulary you have. But when the sound is before ED is voiced, it's different. Now we know this, we're teaching a long time, we've been teaching a very long time, and we know this. And the problem is how do you get new teachers to be brave enough to tackle it? How do you get new students to be able to, to use it? Okay. In an A2 lesson, again, food, adjectives. Boiled, boiled, <coughs> fried, steamed, and then strained and microwaved. The B2 lesson, burgled, mugged, robbed, questioned, charged, imprisoned. So all of those are the D endings. All right, now when the ED is preceded by voiceless or unvoiced sounds, and I'm sorry, it's green, so it's hard to see. 
but I'll read the first ones, talked, worked, stressed, okay? And at the higher levels you have crunched, published, balanced, lots of these ones. In the A2 lesson then, with our food values, <coughs> we can go baked, sliced, chopped, washed, whisked, mashed, okay? In the B2 lesson with crime and passives, we have chased and punched and handcuffed and frisked and searched and released. There's lots and lots of them. Now, this is my problem here. <coughs> we call this, we want to break up. We have a lot of Eds here. We have <laughs> <with> bad Eds. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the one on the right. Depends on your... But the problem is with this one, um, are they all bad? Okay, so we're going back to this chart. Okay, we need to think outside of the box. We do need to think outside the box because people are still making this mistake at C1. So, I think for students, they're looking at the words and then they try and, they always like to say what they see. Okay, people like to say what they see. So English spelling is horrible. Yeah, they like to say what they see. So, it's easy when you have a word that ends in t or d. Wanted, decided. Okay, so you just tell the students and the, the new teachers if a word ends in t and the following ed ending, you have id or it. That's not a problem for anybody. It's not a problem. And I've tried this through A2, B1, B2, C1 classes, and it's across the board, so it's not a level problem actually. It's, it's teachers not doing it in class. And this happens, and you see it in observations, and you see it in CPDs, people just don't know how to deal with it. Um, so, I have a little strategy, okay? <coughs> okay, so if you have a word that ends in, let's go back a bit. Okay, let's go back here. Um, <coughs> when the ED is preceded by or don't you just say id or id? No problem? Really, really isn't a problem. When the ED is preceded by a voiced sound, why do people still say boiled and, you know, uh, uh, like stewed or grilled or imprisoned? Why do they do that at higher levels? So it's an easy thing to do. Just drop the schwa, drop the id, drop the little vowel. Okay? So if the ED is, pre this is my new rule, <laughs> it's <laughs> the idea is that it will assimilate back. So just drop the uh, you tell students, just drop the in. So you have burgled, burgled, and another drop the in. Burgled. Okay, that's easy. It's voiced. There's a duh. Easy. It's less easy when you get to the voiceless sounds because these are the ones where people make mistakes of over and over again. And there are only nine of them, remember. There are only nine voiceless sounds. So actually, this is a strategy that is quite simple and it works very well. And um, have a look at your cards. Okay, we have one minute to try. Well, you have 30 seconds, actually. <laughs> On your cards, and if you don't have cards, look at the person beside you. The green cards are the easy ones. They, they have the voiceless, just give you a clue, the voiced ending, and then ED. So you have a voiceless sound, voiced sound on the, on the green cards, and then it. So can you try saying them with the person beside you? The ones on the red cards are more difficult. Okay, stop for a second. Okay? What I'd like you to do, you have another 20 seconds. Now, this time, and this goes against all the rules, but don't worry, it's a good strategy. It works because there's only nine voiceless sounds, remember? Um, you. After the voiceless sound, for example, here, baked, baked, we don't want to say baked, say d, don't say t, say d, because we kill ourselves saying t, d, t, d. They don't get that. They get the ud, but they don't get the t, d. Say the, can you say bake d? Bake d. What happens? The d is assimilating back into this voiceless sound, I will assimilate back into a ch sound. It's magic. <laughs> English, English spelling is horrible. English, this is my point, the English uh, uh, phonetic system is really, really clear. So, big d. You have two seconds to try it with the red cards. 
Every opportunity in grammar, in vocabulary, and everything. Thank you very much.